Hello and welcome to another day, another hack. So let me show you what we are going to build today. In the first part, we will build a crossfade animation. Basically transitioning from one image to the other. And then in the second part, we will add motion. Sliding in the images. And even we'll have a video at the end. For both, we will only use CSS, so let's just get started. I have a starter file ready with some um, seven radio buttons here and seven images. All the images are, of course, the same width and the same height. So first, let's take care of the images. Uh, we want to be able to stack them on top of each other for the fading to work. So let's go ahead in our markup and take care of the box class. So real quick, uh, giving you a tour of the markup, we do have a container element with the class of wrap. This is gonna be our radio buttons. This is the container for all the images, the main class being box, and then we have the images inside. And at the bottom, we do have the labels that are going to be used later on to trigger the navigation. So the box class is right here. We're going to go ahead and use position absolute to stack them on top of each other. By default, I think top and left are always at zero, but let's just put it on. And one last thing, let's change the opacity here to zero. So when we refresh, all our images should be gone. Okay, good. Now, what we want to do, let's go back to the browser for a second, is whenever we click on one of these, the corresponding box or the image um, comes into view. So how we're going to achieve that is we're going to use the check state. So in our radios, we do have the class corresponding to those um, boxes. So let's go ahead and target the check state of those. So we're going to go with black first. We're going to add the checked rule. And we're going to use the general sibling selector, which is that little squiggly thing. Now, that is going to be the sibling that we're going to target is the boxes element. So boxes and precisely the black one inside of it. And let's give it an opacity of one. Okay, let's refresh here. Let's click our very first one and Mr. Shifu comes into view. Pretty neat. So let's go ahead and do it for all of them. So we have all the corresponding classes in here now. Uh, black, red, yellow, orange, purple, blue, green, uh, which are the same as the button classes here. Let's save this. Let's go back and refresh. So when we click on the first one, second one, third, all the images are coming into view. Okay. So let's do two more things. Let's have one of them like being selected by default. So the very first one here, we can add the check state. So by default, the first slide is going to show. And now let's add this transition. It's happening, but it's very fast. So it's harsh. We just want something that is very smooth uh, to achieve the crossfade. So let's go ahead and um, on the box element again here in the CSS, let's add the transition rule here. Basically we're saying that anytime a transition happens, specifically opacity, um, let's make sure it takes, uh, let's say a second and a half. And let's use the ease in out effect. All right, so let's see. 
No. Nice. So you see that little transition that is happening from one image to the other. Better than what we had a little earlier. Okay, next, what we want to do is hide these radio buttons. They don't really make for a nice UI and they are very hard to style. So we're going to use the labels that are going to allow us to trigger the same functionality and um, make sure that we have a nicer navigation. So the first thing we can go ahead in our markup, we had these labels in here. And we're going to go ahead and add some styles to it. We cannot see them because there's no width or height. So let's go ahead and add those styles in. And I think I had um, one that is called um, label styles. And I'm going to walk you through it real quick. Um, so labels is the container for all the labels. We're giving it a position absolute, uh, bottom of minus 40. Um, on the left, it's going to be 50%. And the transform is going to be used here to make sure it's center aligned. That's a very nice um, technique that I found out a little bit ago. Uh, and it works on vertical and horizontal rules. That's pretty neat, uh, but that's out of the scope of this uh, tutorial. So let's keep going. Uh, S index, which stands for slide index that we have right here. We're going to give them a width and a height of 14 pixels. So they are the same width and height and the border radius of 50% to achieve a perfect circle. Uh, some color for the background. Uh, we're going to put them uh, next to each other with inline block. Give them some a little breathing room with the margin and uh, give them a border so we can see them easily. So let's save this, go back, and we have them. The important part of those labels is that the four property is targeting the ID of the radio. So we have label for slide one, two, three to seven. These properties are the same value as the ID of each of these buttons. So that will allow us when we click on the label, that's going to trigger the checked state on the button. So essentially giving us the effect that we wanted earlier. So the second one, the third one, fourth, fifth, and so forth and so on. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and get rid of, not get rid of, but hide our navigation. Uh, buttons. So we have this class R nav that we're going to be using since that's a unique one for the input radio button. So let's go ahead and give it a display of none. Okay. Now they are not showing here, but the effect is still in place. And now the problem is this labels, it's very hard to know which one is selected. So just as we did earlier with the boxes, we're going to reuse a syntax similar to this to target the label state. Okay. So let's go ahead and right below here, let's um, add this snippet. And basically, you see that they are almost the same. The only thing that is different here is they're targeting a different element. These ones are targeting the boxes, the boxes container, and this one is targeting the labels container. Here we um, taking care of the opacity. In this case, we're taking care of the background color. So let's go back, refresh. And now you see that we have the yellow background color for our coin label here. So pretty neat. 
um, in a few minutes we are able to achieve the CSS crossfade um, with radio buttons and uh, some smartly placed label. Pretty good. Now let's get to the next part of our tutorial here.